After renovating our roof and this room, we now have two accesses to this crawl space that our house has. And to close them off, I'm going to make two simple doors out of plywood. If you'd like to join me, come on in. Hi and welcome, I'm Andreas. We renovated our roof and extended this room, so we now have this different access to this crawl space. And in making these doors, I didn't want to go fancy. I just needed two simple doors to shut these two accesses. And um, the usual doors that you could buy ready-made, they were not the correct size. And I wanted those accesses to be as large as possible because we use these crawl spaces as storage. So what I do is make simple frames out of plywood and a simple door out of plywood and have two hinges that close this off. So um, basically this is a very simple project with the focus on making these doors as invisible as possible in the finished roof. So let's get going with cutting down the plywood. Now I've cut all the parts and drilled the screw holes, they're going to be glued and screwed together and um, now I'm going to sand them and give the visible edges a nice chamfer so that they look nice from the outside and after that I can glue them together. So the glue on these frames has dried and now I'm going to use my new router table. Um, if you haven't seen the video how I built that, I'll link it in the corner. Um, I'll use that to cut a shadow gap on the outside because I want these frames to sit flush with the wall and then have these this little shadow gap around it um, so that it's not as protruding as it would be if I put some trim on top of it. So I've done a test piece to figure out the best dimensions for the shadow gap and now I'm going to route it out on all of these three carcasses.
now that these shadow gaps are cut, um, the next step is to give the doors, which are going to sit flush with the frame, something to close against. And for that, I'm just going to use 12 millimeter plywood and glue it on the inside. And that also gives me the chance to add some rubber sealing. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. So here I've made a test piece. Um, the rubber is just going to go into a kerf here that I cut in the middle of the 12 millimeter plywood. And this gets glued here on the inside, obviously on the correct depth. And then I have the 15 millimeter plywood that is the door. And so I have to figure out how far in that has to go. And I determined that it has to be about 22 millimeters like this. And then the door can close against here um, and seal that off. And this is going to be the inner frame then all around the whole frame. So now that the glue has dried, I will cut the doors to size. I left them oversized a little bit so that I can fit them exactly into their respective frames. And I'm going to attach them using hinges. And for those hinges, I got in touch with my partners at Hettich because I wasn't really sure what kind of hinge was suited for my purpose. And I learned a couple of things that I'd like to share with you. First of all, you need to know if your door is going to shut on top of the frame, so at the front like this, or if it's going to shut into the frame so that it's flush with the outer, with the, with the front of the frame. And in my case, I want it in, inside the frame, um, flush with the, with the front of the frame. And to know this is important because there are different hinges that are suited for either one or the other or sometimes for both purposes, but that's something you have to make up your mind about basically before you even start building because it will um, have consequences on a lot of design decisions later on. So I got these hinges now, they will sit here on the inside and then we'll open the door out and when it's in it will be flush with the front of the frame. Another thing that you need to make up your mind about is how far the door should open. So will it be enough if it opens 90 degrees and then stands out from the frame or will it have to open more so that for example it gets out of the way 
That's also another thing that you need to look out for your hinges because some hinges will just go to 90 degrees, others will go further. In my case, this is a door to a crawl space. So when we go in there, we usually want to store something in there. So it's good when the door gets out of the way as much as possible. So that's why I got the hinges that open much wider than 90 degrees so that the door is really out of the way and we can get in there, for example, with suitcases that we store in the crawl space or the furniture that we don't use at the moment, stuff like that. So these basically are the two things that you should look out for. How does the hinge work? Will the door stay in front of the frame or inside the frame? And second, how far will the hinge open? Now that the doors are fitted, I'm going to take them out again and then um, I'll put in these handles here and the last steps then will be sanding and painting.
The doors are finished. I really like how they turned out. Basically they were supposed to be unobtrusive and they are. It wasn't a very complicated project. The challenges were a bit in the the gaps to get them evenly, to get all the distances right, to get the angles right and to make everything basically disappear once it is installed. It has worked fairly well and I really like the outcome and I'm really pleased now that this project is finished. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time. Bye bye.